My lovely imps, we just came hot out of a segment talking about Biden, and I've been informed that the full interview has been posted. However, it is in its edited form. We are supposed to be getting an unedited version of this in the future, but as it's 28 minutes, I think value can be gained from watching the entire NBC News, or sorry, ABC News, George Stephanopoulos interview with Joe Biden. And I'm going to, we're going to do this together now. Let's enjoy. And by enjoy, I mean scream. Good evening, everyone, on this momentous evening. I'm Juju Chang. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Tonight, ABC News has an exclusive interview with President Joe Biden. Our George Stephanopoulos sat down with the president for his first televised interview since that poor debate performance against Donald Trump. President Biden says he is committed to staying in the race and confident that he will prevail and beat Donald Trump. The president was directly called on to answer for his faltering appearances and whether he still has the mental and physical fitness for another term in the White House. Our team is standing by, of course, for analysis. But first, let's get to the interview. Mr. President, thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the debate. Uh, you and your team said, have said you had a bad night. But your, <laughs> but your friend Nancy Pelosi actually framed the question that I think is on the minds of millions of Americans. Was this a bad episode or the sign of a more serious condition? It was a bad episode. Uh, no indication of any serious condition. I was exhausted. I didn't listen to my instincts in terms of preparing. And I had a bad night. You know, you say you were exhausted, and, and I know you've said that before as well, but you came, and you did have a tough month, but you came home from Europe about 11 or 12 days before the debate, spent six days in Camp David. Why wasn't that enough rest time, enough recovery time? Because I was sick, I was feeling terrible. Matter of fact, the docs with me, I asked if they did a COVID test because they were trying to figure out what's wrong. They did a test to see whether or not I had uh, some infection, you know, a virus. I didn't. They just had a really bad cold. And did you ever watch the debate afterwards? A cold is a virus, but okay. I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault mine. Nobody's fault but mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that, you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate, nine now or whatever the hell it is. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran, not my fault, no one else's fault, no one else's fault. But, but it seemed like you were having trouble from the first question in, even before he spoke. Well, I just had a bad night. You've had some bad interviews once Oh, more. good point. Gamer Girl Uwu says, this interview happened during the day, during the time when he said he's his, at his best. So this is his best now. That's a really good point. Oh, I, I can't remember any, but I'm sure you do. I've had plenty. Right. I, I guess the question, the, the problem is here for a lot of Americans watching, is you've said, going back to 2020, watch me, yep. to people who are concerned about your age. And you know, 50 million Americans watched that debate. It seemed to confirm fears they already had. Well, look. After that debate, I did 10 major events in a row, including until 2 o'clock in the morning after that debate. Yeah, a lot of them were bad. I did events a lot of them in were North bad. Carolina. I did events in, in, in Georgia. I did events like this today. Large crowds, overwhelming response, no, no, no slipping. And so I just had a bad night. I don't know why. We know that was a lie. We know that was a lie. We watched clips from his other things. And how, how quickly... Did it, did it come to you that you were having that bad night? Well, Kenya was having a bad night when I realized that even when I was answering a question, even though I turned his mic off, he was still shouting. And I, I let what? it distract me. Huh? I, I'm not blaming him on that. But I realized that I just wasn't in control. 
Well, part of the other concern is that uh, this seems to have fit into a pattern of decline that has been reported on recently. New York Times. Why do you smile at that, dude? What? Had a headline on July 2nd. Biden's lapses are said to be increasingly common and worrisome. Here's what they wrote. People who have spent time with President Biden over the last few months or so said the lapses appear to have grown more frequent, more pronounced, and after Thursday to Thursday's debate more worrisome. By many accounts, as evidenced by video footage, observation, and interviews, Mr. Biden is not the same today as he was even when he took office three and a half years ago. Similar reporting in the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Are you the same man today that you were when you took office three and a half years ago? We just, by the way, if you haven't seen it, in my Biden segment, uh, where we talk specifically about this week, meaning the week of the 5th, um, where we talk about uh, 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 this week's um, all of the fallout, basically, from Joe Biden. Um, if you haven't seen that segment, go check it out, because we went and watched and compared side by side his current interviews with his ones from 2020. And it's literally night and day. Half years ago. In terms of successes, yes. I also was the guy who put together a peace plan for the Middle East that may be coming to fruition. I was also the guy that expanded NATO. I was also the guy that grew the economy. All the individual things that were done were ideas I had or I fulfilled. I moved on. And so, for example, you know, well, well that was true then. What's Biden done lately? It's just today, just announced 200,000 new jobs. We're moving in a direction that no one's ever taken on. I know you know this from the days in the... Fishney says he was also the first black president, excuse me, the first black woman VP to serve under a black president. In the, in the, in the government. I took on big pharma, I beat them. No one said I could beat them. I took on all the things we said we got done. We were told we couldn't get done. And part of it is what I said when I ran was I wanted to do three things. Restore some decency to the office, restore some support for the middle class instead of trickle down economics, both from the middle out and the bottom up, the way the wealthy still do fine, everyone does better, and middle unite out. the country. But what has all that work over the last three and a half years cost you physically, mentally, emotionally? Well, I, I just think it cost me a really bad night, a bad run. But, you know, I. Huh? George, I have, I'm optimistic about this country. I don't think we're a country oh. of losers, if he points out. I don't think America's in tough shape. I think America's on a cusp of breaking through and so... I think it cost me a bad night. Pivots to, I think America's good. What the fuck? Many incredible opportunities. This next term, I'm gonna make sure we have a, a straighten out the tax system. I'm gonna make sure we're in a situation where we have health care for all people, or we're in a position where we have have child care and elder care, free up, and all these things. The one thing I'm proudest of is remember when my economic plan was put forward, a lot of the mainstream economists said it's not going to work. Well, guess what? You now have 16 Nobel laureates, 16 of them in economics, saying that Biden's next term would be, based on what he wants to do, enormous success. Trump's plan would cause a recession, would significantly increase inflation. I've made great progress, and that's what I plan on doing, and we can do this. I, I, I understand. This is the best section that he's had, and, and this is the best section he's had in the whole first seven minutes of this interview was this little segment where he said, America's great, and I think we can do good. I think we can do real good. I think Donald Trump will cause bad things to happen, but we can do good things. And it wasn't even the question that he was asked. Grime Dango says, word on the hill is that this interview has done nothing. The campaign said they'd see this and it would do it. Would do it. They'd show him flexing on him. And no, it just hasn't. No, it hasn't. This is terrible. This is confirmation. You're, yeah, that totally makes sense to me. And that, and I'm not disputing that. What I'm asking you is uh, about your personal situation. Do you dispute that there have been more lapses, especially in the last several months? Can I run the 110 flat? No, but I'm still in good shape. Are you more frail? No.
Bazinga. I know you spoke my schedule. <laughs> I know you spoke with your doctor after the debate. What did he say? He said he just looked at me. He said you're exhausted. Grime Dango says Monday is going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. Excuse me. I got to I got to I got to mosey on down to bed cuz uh a big big day coming Tuesday or when maybe Monday or whatever. Anyway, you know what I mean. What's on Monday? Monday Monday is when we're going to start seeing every all of the percolation from this come out. It's going to be the big news day. We're going to see everybody from the over the weekend looking at this interview. We're going to see what decisions are made. People are going to be coming back to the office. Yatrial says, my grandpa is showing signs of dementia and he is denying everything just like Biden is. I'm pretty sure it's a common thing with dementia patients. Yeah, it unfortunately is. Uh, again, it's hard to say if it's just egotism and, and, and that he's rooted in power or if that's also a further sign of dementia. The biggest thing to me is the sundowning. That is the biggest concern to me and obviously everything, the, the general demeanor. But... I said, I have medical doctors traveling everywhere every president does, as you know. Medical doctors, some of the best in the world, travel me everywhere I go. I have an ongoing assessment of what I'm doing. And they don't hesitate to tell me if they think there's something wrong. I know you said you have an ongoing assessment. Have you had a full neurological and cognitive evaluation? I've had, I get a full neurological test every day with me. By the way, here's from Axios, just real quick. I just wanna show you guys this from Axios. This is on this interview. What we're hearing, no one's mind has been changed, a House Democrat said, adding that a growing number of lawmakers agree that it's time for Joe Biden to step aside and are hoping to give him space to do this on his own. Another House Democrat said their colleagues feel Biden's interview was not impressive and that he's toast in November. A third, the interview hardly inspires confidence. It changes nothing. A fourth House Democrat said that they were shocked by Biden's refusal to recognize reality in terms of polling and his failure to make an argument about why he even wants a second term. They're going to mad king him. Will... Okay, I shouldn't say they will. Is it possible that we will truly see the first mad king treatment? I think this is a perfect time, by the way, to just read a donation that I got. I was going to read all the donations at the same time, but I think this one is especially important. Another bored person says, what did your king say when you stabbed him in the back? The same thing he'd been muttering for hours. Biden mumbles nonsense, Clint. Listen here, Jack. It's, it's over for you. You don't understand. It's my, I'm the nominee. And anyway... You'd have to get a whole can of marmalade to change my mind on that, Jack. Front page of Vox? Hold on, let's see. What's the what's on the front page of Vox right now? Let's take a look. Holy shit. In an ABC interview, Biden charts a course for the Dems' worst case scenario. The president appeared too frail to defeat Donald Trump and too delusional to drop out. In his first interview since last week's disastrous debate, Joe Biden appeared too frail to defeat Donald, to defeat Donald Trump and too delusional to end his campaign. Far from easing anxieties about his candidacy, the president's sit down with George Stephanopoulos of ABC News should further alarm Democratic leaders. Biden's remarks indicated that his party may be heading towards a worst case scenario, one in which the president is largely incompetent as a campaigner, but not so consistently and fragrantly enough that, he's in, that his incapacity to win the re-election becomes undeniable, even to himself. Had Biden seemed every bit as ill and confused as he did at last week's debate, it would have been easier to persuade him to drop out, or at least for Democrats to unify beneath behind a concentrated push for his exit. If the president has somehow appeared to grow a decade younger over the past eight days, then he could conceivably have rescued his campaign. Instead, he did better, but still awful. 
I don't think he did that much better. I mean, I guess it must be better than the debate. Which means that salvaging the Democratic Party's chances will require a wise and courageous show of defiance from its congressional leadership. It's not clear that this one is in the offing. He's washed. The president's aim in Friday's interview is clear to establish all, that all the disquieting features of his debate perform, performance, the incoherent, shaky voice, and vacant spatial, facial expressions were all one-off aberrations brought on by a cold and poor preparation rather than symptoms of cognitive decline. There probably wasn't any plausible way of making this case. By the time the interview aired, the Washington Post, New York Times, and NBC News had all pu published stories indicating that Biden had repeatedly suffered me similar mental lapses behind closed doors in recent months. That's exactly what I fucking said! I told you all that the reason that everyone was turning on him all at once is because th they've known. They've known, but this was a the moment where they couldn't hide it anymore, and so they were all scrambling to show, I'm a rational one, I haven't been hiding it. See, I was just, it, I was in good faith. It's a rout. This is a total rout. In the face of Donald Trump. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Let's finish the let's finish the interview. That is disastrous. And I've had a full I'm routing. Ah! This is like this is this is like oh my god. It's it's like the the watching the worst game of total war. Full route, one by one, just brrr, all of them fleeing. Horrible. Nightmare. Grime Dango says, The fact that people in competitive seats in Congress are speaking up is wild. That was a real shit is really happening. Real history is going down right now. Mistress Lynn says, I'm 51 and this is beyond anything I've ever seen. It's insane. Yes, we are witnessing irrefutable confirmation of the total rot of the American political system. It's crazy how over the last four full years, we have watched nightmare situation after nightmare situation and it just keeps getting worse. And everyone's been saying, it's okay. <clears throat> Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Just keep on voting. Constitutional crisis, loss of the of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, complete invalidation of, of faith in the most basic portions of electoral politics, meaning the vote. Donald Trump completely obliterated that on January 6th and beyond. Actually wild. Physical, I had... You know, I mean, I, I've been a Walter Reed for my physicals. I mean, hey, evaluation. I, Hold on. They don't hesitate to tell me if they think there's something wrong. You clearly don't listen. I know you said you have an ongoing assessment. Have you had a full neurological and cognitive evaluation? I've had, I get a full neurological test every day. With Dude, come on. This is, that's Trump right there. That is Trumpian. He is becoming Donald Trump. I get a full neurological test every day. Dude, come the fuck on, man. That is just a Trump line. Except less funny and delivered worse. And I've had a full physical. I had, you know, I mean, I, I've been a Walter Reed for my physicals. I mean, uh, yes. The answer. I, I know your doctor said he consulted with a neurologist. I, I guess I'm asking a, a slightly different question. Have you had the specific cognitive tests and have you had a neurologist, a specialist, do an examination? No. He's doing the Tucker face. Oh, no one said I had to. No one said they said I'm good. Would you be willing to undergo an independent medical evaluation that included 
neurological and cognitive, cognitive tests and release the results to the American people? Look, I have a cognitive test every single day. Every day I have that test. Everything I do. You know, not only am I campaigning, but I'm running the world. Not, and that's not how it sounds like. at the camera <laughs> he's hitting him with the force lightning yeah. holy shit it's over hyperbole but we are the essential nation in the world Madeleine Albright was right and every single day for example today before I come out here I'm on the phone with the with the Prime Minister of well, anyway, I shouldn't get into detail but what I'm on the phone with the Prime Minister of... Well, anyway. Damn, I've never heard of that country before. Oh, no! Bruh. With Netanyahu. I'm on the phone with the new Prime Minister of England. I'm working on... Alexi with the $5 says, Fuck it, Dale Gribble for president. Thank you very much, Alexi. True! Oh, man. On what we're doing with regard to in Europe with regard to expansion of NATO and whether it's going to stick. I'm taking on Putin. I mean, every day, there's no day I go through they're not those decisions I have to make every single day. And you have been doing that in the American people. Have well, anyway, is a valid country. I will not tolerate this erasure. I'm sorry for all of the Wollanyweisians. Well watching, yet their concerns about your age and your health are growing. So that's why I'm asking, could, to reassure them, would you be willing to have the independent medical evaluation? Watch me between, there's a lot of time left in this campaign. Watch me to put you, this, that's a, that's almost, a ribidu, uh, was like a golden Trump moment because it was so funny. Donald Trump just had a ribidu, ah, uh, moment, but it was not funny. Like, it was, are growing so that's why i'm asking could to reassure them would you be willing to have the independent medical evaluation watch me between there's a lot of time left in this right, watch me between there's a lot of time campaign it's over 125 days so the answer decision the right answer right now is no you you don't want to do that right no, now. i've already done it you talked a lot about your successes in the, at the beginning of this interview and and i don't want to dispute that i don't want to debate that but as you know Elections are about the future, not the past. They're about tomorrow, not yesterday. And the question on so many people's minds right now is, can you serve effectively for the next four years? George, I'm the guy that put NATO together, the future. Grime Dango says, I am fully coconut pilled. I am detached from what was. Okay, hold on a second. I know I am, I am also a bit, uh, I'm on the, co I'm with the coconut brigade, okay? I'm I'm comrades in arms with the coconut brigade, but there's a small problem, okay? Because Kamala said, "You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? You live in the context of all that came before, okay?" But she also said, "What can be unburdened by what was." But if what can be didn't just fall out of a coconut tree and exist in the context of all that came before, then how can it possibly be unburdened by what was? I know, Grandango, right? I, I, got, I got this. The, the, the stocks on, uh, finally, a president that I can actually do an impersonation of. I'm going to practice my Kamala impersonation because I think Kamala stocks are going way up. I really do. And if that's the case, worst case scenario, I practice one useless bit. Best case scenario, I have the best Kamala impersonation in a business in a field that has no others. Who do you know who can do a Kamala impersonation? The laugh is going to be the hard part. 
The laugh is going to be the hardest part. Getting her laugh down is going to be brutal. I'll practice it, though. <laughs> Holy shit, this meme! But so true. I gotta be able to get, by the way, if I wanna do the correct K Kamala impersonation, I gotta get the Cory down. That one was legendary. The Cory moment was so good. Okay, though, seriously, though, hot take. There's a lot of stuff I don't like about Kamala. But, I think it was Ettinger Mentum on Twitter. Uh, Ettinger Mentum said that Kamala has the silliness necessary to be a good candidate. And I actually think that's true. I, I actually think, like, Ettinger Mentum was doing, like, a, like a fucking Kvisatz Haderach, like, f I see the future paths unfolding before me level of truth-telling right there. Because um, that's so correct. Like her, her, her goofiness is like, it's it it borderline. It, it does tip over into cringe, but that's every politician. Joe Biden has no silliness. He had some at the beginning, like when Joe Biden called that guy fat, where he was like, "Listen here, fat, I could beat your ass in a fucking push-up fight. Get up here, come on up, let's go gut to gut." When he did that, that was funny. He doesn't have that anymore, not even a little bit. But Kamala has the like, has the, 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 the goofiness, just sheer goofiness. I can't believe I'm saying it, but. Obviously, I'd love it if it was Gretchen Whitmer, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I just, I don't, I don't see it. Maybe, I would love that and I'll push for it. But right now, I think the most likely thing is we're going to get Kamala. And I actually think that Kamala could completely wash Trump. And think about it like this, okay? Kamala could wash Trump simply because she has the energy to actually campaign. If Kamala was using her full potential, she could be out there. And Joe Biden is really unpopular. Kamala Harris is not that unpopular. She's not popular, but she's not unpopular which means that kamala harris could hit the road running and conv successfully convince some people to go all the joe voters are going to still vote for kamala we already know you want to know what the biggest uh proof of concept of the replace joe biden campaign is that joe biden supporters are out are out there every single goddamn day the riding with joe people are like i would vote for a cooked dog turd as long as it wasn't Donald Trump, I'd rather eat the diarrhea dump of a buffalo and down it with beer. As long as it meant I didn't have to vote for Donald Trump. Which means we can call their bluff. Prove it then. Which we know they will because they're cucks. They'd rather have a diarrhea dump in their ear. Whitmer's not ready. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yep. Yep. Basically, to to Toka Garoth. All right, let's continue. No one thought I could expand it. I'm the guy that shut Putin down. No one thought it could happen. I'm the guy that put together the South Pacific initiative with AUKUS. I'm the guy that got 50 nations, out, not only in Europe, outside of Europe as well, to help Ukraine. I'm the guy that got Japanese to expand their budget. 
on the so I mean these and for example when I decided we used to have 40 percent of the computer chip and we invented the chip a little chip for the computer chip it's in everything from cell phone to weapons we invented the chip a little chip for the computer chip it's in everything from cell phone to weapons we basically invented the Nintendo Jack and so we used to have 40 percent we're down to virtually nothing so I get in the plane against the advice of everybody and I fly to South Korea I convinced them to invest in the United States billions of dollars. Now we have tens of billions of dollars being invested in the United States. No, Grime Dango, you see, by the electoralist mind, Joe Biden personally invented the, the microchip. You know? That's how this works, right? And by extension, every liberal who voted for Joe Biden also did that because that's, that's, how, that's the nationalist message. Now, any bad thing that Joe did, well, that's not their fault. Their hands were tied. But any good thing, that was, that was electoralism, baby. It's a throwback. It's a throwback to earlier in the stream. Real fans know. Real fans understand what I'm talking about. Real, t real fans know that I don't have dementia. I'm just re referencing. Well, anyway. It's making us back in a position where we're going to own that industry again. We have, I mean, I, I just... Anyway, I'm, I don't want to. Think <laughs> too I did. He literally did it like two seconds after I did it. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I ought to hang up my hat, okay? Or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this is just proof that I'm psychic, okay? I was gonna say he started doing it for me, but to be honest, I'm just a precog much credit i have great staff but all the, my, i guess my point is all that takes a toll do you have the mental and physical capacity to do it for another four years i believe so i wouldn't be running if i didn't think i did look i'm running again because i think i understand best what has to be done to take this nation to a completely new, new level we're on our way we're on our way and look the decision recently made by Dude, the Supreme Court just undermined every single thing that you did since you joined since you got into office. I'm not even kidding. Literally almost every decision that he's personally overseen has been undermined by the Supreme Court. And that won't change if he gets a second term. He's if this was if this was a real presidency, Joe Biden wouldn't be struggling through fucking pudding on national TV. He would be go he would be running his own pressers and he would be going these fuckers in the Supreme Court. We're going to make them suffer. We will be expanding the court. They're going to have to sit through the longest meetings you've ever imagined with 17 new Supreme Court justices. Because if you think you can rule this country by Supreme Court diktat, that's what he should be doing. But instead, it's this. Supreme Court on immunity. You know, the next president of the United States, it's not just about whether he or she knows what they're doing. It's, it's, it's not, not about a, con, a conglomerate of people making decisions. It's about the character of the president. The character of the president is going to determine whether or not this constitution is employed the right way. And we should note that ABC News offered Donald Trump the same opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one interview, and he declined. We'll have more of George Stephanopoulos' exclusive interview with President Biden in just 60 seconds. To serve another four years. Yes, I am, because George, the last thing I want to do is not be able to meet that. I think as some of the senior economists and senior foreign policy specialists say, if I stop now, I go down history as a pretty successful president. No one thought I could get done when we got done. But are you being with honest with yourself as well about your ability to defeat Donald Trump right now? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Bro, bro, bro. Say that, and let me challenge. Is it bad to doom at this point? Yes. Yes, it's bad to doom at this point. We've been right all along. This, this People are finally listening to what we have to say. This is the chance to get people to actually take action that could save lives. 
This entire time, the machine has been trucking towards exactly this spot. I've been saying it. You've been saying it. For a very long time. But finally, because of this, people are listening. No dooming. Worst time to doom. We already knew it was a real possibility, a real likelihood that dark times were coming for this country. We knew that because of the Supreme Court. That calculation hasn't changed. Joe Biden was never the last line of, the def of defense. We are. Other people are realizing this and we need to hammer it home as hard as possible. Challenge you, sure. because you were close, but behind going into the debate. Um, you're further behind now by, by any measure. It's been a two-man race for several months. Inflation has come down. In those last few months, he's become a convicted felon, yet you're still falling further behind. You guys keep saying that. George, do you, look, do you know polling better than anybody? Do you think polling data is accurate as it used to be? I don't think so, but I think when you look at all of the polling data right now, it shows that he's certainly ahead in the popular vote, probably even more ahead in the battleground states. And one of the other key factors there is it shows that in many of the battleground states, the Democrats who are running for Senate in the House are doing better than you are. It's a Biden problem, not a Democrat problem. We know this. Well, that's not unusual in some states. I carried an awful lot of Democrats last time I ran. He's hand waving. He's hand waving that he's going to lose to Donald Trump. 2020. Look, I remember them telling me the same thing in 2020. I can't win. The poll show, I can't win. Remember 2024, 2020, the red wave was coming. Before the vote, I said, that's not going to happen. We're going to win. The only people saying a red wave was coming was literally like right wingers. That's it. No one else was saying a red wave was coming. This is your own party freaking out. This is your own donors, your own closest confidence are telling you, you're fucked, man. The polls didn't show a red wave. It was fucking Tim Pool who said there was a red wave. It was fucking America First TV Network. We did better in an off year than almost any incumbent oh. president ever has done. They said in 2023, all the tough races were not gonna win. I went into all those areas, all those, all those districts, and we won. All that is true, but 2020 was a close race. And your approval rating has dropped significantly since then. I think the last poll I saw was at about 36%. The oh, number of right. Americans who think you're too old to serve has doubled since 2020. Wouldn't a clear-eyed political calculus tell you that it's gonna be much tougher to win in 2024? Not when you're running against a pathological liar. Not when he hadn't been challenged in a way that he's about to be challenged. Not th this, this is how he's about to be challenged? By you doddering to the finish line and then fucking shitting out before the finish line? What are you talking about? You were actually campaigning in 2020. When people You've had months to challenge him. Oh, well, I sure had months, but I was also doing a hell of a lot of other things like wars around the world like keeping NATO together, like working, anyway, but look. No, no, not anyway. Do you really believe you're not behind right now? I think it's, a, all the pollsters I talk to tell me it's a toss up, it's a toss up. It shouldn't be a toss up against the criminal serial liar. How, throwback. Do you guys remember way back at the beginning of this year, when I did that stream that was about uh, the nightmare before us, and I said that it was an absolute unmitigated disaster that Joe Biden should have had this election in the bag, that it should have been the easiest win ever, and he's fumbling it, and that was before now? Why are you boasting about it being a toss-up? Dude! And when I'm behind, there's only one poll I'm really far behind, CBS poll and NBC, I mean, excuse me, and... Uh, New, York, New York Times and NBC both have, have yeah, you about that, six points uh, behind in the popular vote. That's exactly right. New York Times had oh, me man. behind before anything happened to do with this race. Had me behind, behind 10 points. 
10 points ahead of BBI. Nothing's changed substantially since the debate in the New York Times poll. Just when you look at the reality, though, Mr. President, I mean, you won the popular vote uh, in, in 2020, but it was still deadly close in the Electoral By seven College. Million you're votes. Yes, but you're behind now in the popular vote. I don't, I don't buy that. Is it worth <laughs> Crime Dango says, also, relatedly, I'm sorry I got your entire household sick. I know you were 12 days out from a major flight with foreign diplomats and had a big debate coming up. <laughs> Demon Mama, that's bad. That's my bad. Now, now listen here. That debate, sure, uh, I was a little sick, and they said it wasn't a virus, but it was a bit of a head cold. And, but, you know, in the end, this is America. This is America, and, you know, we really... Uh, uh, what I'm saying is we basically... Uh, we took Medicaid into the... Out, out, we took Medicaid, Medicare... And uh, we, we showed them the way that we treat an immigrant in America, you know? You know what I'm saying? And, well, anyway, it's just, it is what it is. And in the end, it's neck and neck. Did I mention 20-plus lies? It's all good, Grime Dango. It's, it's fine. It's water under the bridge. The time we had together was so much fun, even though it was short-lived. We got to play fucking worm span, and we had the best macaroni around. It's all good. It was beautiful, in fact. So it's all water under the bridge. You're all good. You don't got to apologize at all. Worth the risk. I really like that game, too. I still like wingspan more than worm span, but I do really like worm span. I think it's awesome. And I had like a, a blast playing it. So I'll totally be down to play it again. I don't think anybody's more qualified to be president or win this race than me. Oh yeah, I gotta open this door. I'm getting really hot. Oh my God, I opened the door and it's like a fucking, somebody cast a magic spell. Holy shit. Please go get some water, Baphomet. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay, everybody. Let's continue. We got to get through this. Oh, we got to get through this. You know, the heart of your case against Donald Trump. Is hell cold or hot? Um, all. Hell has numerous climates. Hell is enormous. Everybody wants... See, whenever people are talking about hell, they're always fixating on the lake of fire, you know? They're all like, oh, lake of fire. But it's not just the lake of fire, okay? We've got the peaks of despair, okay? We've got the caverns of icy forgottenness, okay? The last circle of hell is frozen. Lucifer is stuck in ice. That's fucking fake news. Lucifer is not stuck in ice. We just had lunch today. Is hell flat? No, it's not flat. Hell is approximately the same size as Limgrave, just like the Elden Ring DLC. That is that he's only out for himself, putting his personal interest ahead of the national interest. How do you respond to critics who say that by staying in the race, you're doing the same thing? So it's 72% uh, uh, of the size of the full map? That's correct. And as we know, the full map of reality is quite large. I want to visit the Peaks of Despair. Peaks of Despair, just beautiful. It's a hell of a climb to get up there. You got to make sure you... Work out your legs a bit in advance because it's a bit of a hike, but best views you can imagine, okay? Oh, come on. Well, I don't think those critics know what they're talking about. They're just wrong? It's wrong. Look, Trump is a pathological liar. Trump is, he, he is... Have you ever seen anything Trump did that benefited himself, somebody else, not him? I'm, you can't answer, I know. I've, I've questioned him. Wait, what? Have you ever seen anything Trump did that benefited himself, somebody else, not him? I'm, you can't answer, I know. I've, I've questioned him and his allies as persistently as any journalist has. Oh, I know you have. I'm not being yeah. critical. Yeah. I'm not being... Okay, listen, to be fair, 
we've seen, we saw the George Stephanopoulos interview against Trump, and he did question Trump pretty hard. Unfortunately, Trump kind of did. But that was the one, I think that was that the one where Trump had the little papers? The little graphs? Anyway, whatever, let's go. Critical. But look, I mean, the man. The second circle of hell is where all the fucking happens. Now that's everywhere in hell. We're we're always having a good time in hell. Let me tell you that much. Is it? It's it's the second circle, the first circle, the kitchen table, the bathroom. Doesn't matter. Just wherever suits your fancy. Honestly. General liar. As I said, they pointed out in that debate, he lied 27, 28 times the times, or whatever number, over 20 times. Talk about how as good his economy was, how he brought down inflation, how this is a guy who, unlike only other president other than him, is Hoover, lost more jobs than he created. This is a guy who told us to put bleach in our arms to deal with COVID, with a million, over a million people died. This is a guy who talks about and want to get rid of the healthcare provision. We've heard this line before. This is a practiced NPC line. Do you think this is one of the only existing memories he has in his mind is this particular line? Put in place. This is the guy who wants to give the power back to big pharma to be able to charge exorbitant prices for drugs. This is the guy who wants to undo every single thing I've done. Every single, every single thing. I, I understand that. I understand that's why you want to stay in the race. But if you convinced yourself that only you can defeat him, I convinced myself of two things. I'm the most qualified person to beat him, and I know how to get things done. If you can be convinced that you cannot defeat Donald Trump, will you stand down? With the friends of, and if the Lord Almighty comes out and tells me that, I might do that. Well, it, Mad King, Mad King, Mad King, Mad King. I mean, on a more practical level, Washington Post just reported in the last hour that Senator Mark Warner is, is assembling a group of senators together to try to convince you to stand down because they don't think you can win. Aries to Biden. Do you think he's got like, uh, do you think he's got stockpiles of like his used diapers in strategic locations all over Washington, D.C.? Only real, only, only true Game of Thrones fans will know what I'm talking about. Well, Mark is a good man. We've never had that. He also tried to get the nomination too. Mark's not. Mark and I have a different perspective. I respect him. And if Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you stay in the race, we're going to lose the House and the Senate, how will you respond? I, I go into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail, including Jim Clyburn, every one of them. They all said I should stay in the race, stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said I should leave. But if they do? Well, it's like... They're not going to do that. You sure? Well, yeah, I'm sure. Look, I mean... This is going to be painful if on Monday they do exactly that. Hey, you should come in and say hi. They haven't seen you in a million years. Okay, all right, maybe after. All right. I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. I mean, these hypotheticals, George, if, I mean, if but, all... But it's, it's, it's not that hypothetical anymore. I, I, I grant that the, they have not requested the meeting, but it's been reported... Well, they, I've met with them. I've met with a lot of these people. I've talked with them regularly. I had an hour conversation with Akeem. I had more time than that with Jim Clyburn. I spent time with many hours off and on the last little bit with Chuck Schumer. Okay. It's not like serious situation okay can you imagine if he doubles down if the democrats steamroll the primary in favor of joe and then joe kicks the bucket can you imagine 
what that would do to the Democratic Party permanently if they steamroll their own fucking primary and Joe Biden dies from old age. Christ. I, I had all the governors, all the governors. I agree that the Lord Almighty is not going to come down, but if, if, if you are told reliably from your allies, from your friends and supporters in the Democratic Party, in the House and the Senate, that they're concerned you're going to lose the House and the Senate if you stay in, what will you do? I'm not going to answer that question. Dude, come, you have to answer that question. It's not going to happen. What's your plan to turn the campaign? He's drooling. No, please tell me he's not drooling. It's not going to happen. Which okay, it's just a pixel. No, wait. Okay, please. Hold on. I need to be sure. What's your plan to turn the campaign around? Is it just a pixel? Okay, I want to I wanna believe that's just a pixel. You saw it today. How many, how many people do you get draw crowds like I drew today? You find me more enthusiastic than today? Oh, thank God. Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. He can draw a big crowd, but what does he say? Who, who, who does he have? I'm the guy supposedly in trouble. We raised $38 million within four days after this. Over, we have over a million individual contributors. Individual contributors. Less, less than 200 bucks. We have, I mean, I've not seen what you're, you're proposing. You haven't seen the, the fall off in the polls. You haven't seen the reports of discontent in the Democratic Party, House Democrats, Senate Democrats. I've seen it from the press. Dude, no, man. I'm sorry. This is pure delusion. The press, the press were the first to talk about it, but it has literally been, he admitted already, and this is Trumpian, he admitted already in this conversation that he's heard it from Clyburn, Pelosi, and Hakeem Jeffries. So much to analyze. And so for more insight on this interview, we're joined now by contributing political correspondent. All right, that's the interview. That's the interview. The, the fall off in the polls. You haven't seen the reports of discontent in the Democratic Party, House Democrats, Senate Democrats. I've seen it from the press. I've seen it from the press, and that's it. Um, I truly hope they drop the unedited version of this interview, the uncut version. This is like, I feel like it's a matter of public's of like public safety, a matter of public interest that they drop the unedited version of this interview. We absolutely need to see it because uh that was already bad that's completely uncut but they just cut it right there in the middle of his thought were they just done right then and there they only did a 22 minute interview wow all right all right then They said it was uncut. Okay, but it just trails off at the end. Maybe they just wrapped it right there. Maybe that was it. Maybe they're like, okay, have a good day. That was, uh, that was rough and bad. My God. All right. Well, you saw it there. Uh, Joe Biden's latest big interview. He's not looking good. Things are very, very rough out there. Um, 
Uh, I think they need to get him out of there immediately. They got to ma- they got to give him the Mad King treatment if he won't step down. Um, this is a disaster. It's very clear he's only going to get worse. Um, there's no bounce back from this. The longer that he holds on, the longer that they dilly dally and drag their feet, the easier it gets for Trump to win in the end. And I think that. I'm hoping that we can all agree, Joe Biden certainly agrees, that Donald Trump winning is the, uh, stopping Donald Trump from winning has to be the number one priority. Um, I think probably if they're going to, if they're going to get him out of there, it's going to be Kamala and somebody else. I'd like to see someone like Gretchen Whitmer, but I think that Kamala is the obvious answer because she's currently the VP. People are familiar with her. She doesn't have the unpopularity problems. She can speak publicly. Um, I don't envy her position. She obviously can't do anything until other force. She basically has to leave it out of her hands. She has to be like, very well, I accept it begrudgingly. I would not bet on Joe either. In fact, I would bet against Joe. I believe if they keep Joe Biden, we will have a Trump presidency. There is no shot that he is going to be doing better in a debate come September. That he's going to be doing good enough to be able to be on the campaign trail for the next couple of months. No shot. He's washed. And they got to acknowledge it. What a mess. What a mess. Genuinely sad at points. <laughs> Grime Dango says, Skibbity Biden. Trump is using Hitler's language. Skibbity, skibbity Biden. Oh boy. The good news is for us, nothing changes. The only thing that really changes is the strategic analysis of the playing field. Going forward, we have to get the word out. We have to convince people. We have to convince people not to bet bet their entire lives on electoral politics. We have to get people thinking, moving, and working towards community building, towards consolidating power together, towards shoring up their supplies, towards shoring up uh, their resources, Because whether Trump wins or Biden wins, and there's a very good chance that Trump wins, the reality is that we currently live in a context in which the Supreme Court makes all the decisions. The Democratic federal government is not coming to help us, and people have to be able to help themselves. We need to build resources. We need to ask questions now. We need to start building communities and reliable connections, powering them up as fast as possible. And the sooner we get onto that, with the more people, the better off we'll be, the more lives that we'll be able to save. Anyway, thanks for watching. Do you have thoughts about this? If so, leave them down below. And make sure you subscribe to Demon Mama. Oh.